In December, we showed you how some crop growers in the state were using the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network to monitor their water use in fields. On average, farmers in the network have reported saving more than two inches of irrigation water annually. As planting season wraps up, we thought it'd be a good time to show you how to install watermark soil sensors and ET gauges in case you're interested in using those instruments this year. The watermark sensors are placed at three depths in the soil at one, two, and three feet deep. The ET gauge is placed near a field's edge to measure how much evapotranspiration is taking place. UNL Extension educator Aaron Nigren recently showed us how producers can install and use these tools to help monitor their crop water use. For producers in the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network, or NAWMN, now's a good time to remember to get out in the field and get your watermark sensors installed. Uh, first things you need to do is some prep work before you go out in the field. Um, first thing is to find your sensors, soak them in a bucket of water overnight, then take them out and let them dry. You can even put them in front of a fan to let them dry out a little bit quicker, and then re-soak them at least another night, um, let them dry out again, and then take them to the field wet. Um, we need to do this process before we go into the field um, just to make the sensors work better throughout the season. Once you have that done, um, next thing you want to do is find the location of the sensors that you're going to put in the field. Um, so you want to find a good, easy place to go to, someplace convenient, um, along a pivot access road works well, but you want to make sure that that spot is also someplace that's representative for the field. So once you have that spot in mind, um, then we're going to head out to the field with our sensors. Remember to bring your soil probe along. Uh, we need the soil consultant's tube. But then we're just going to probe down between our corn or soybean plants, remove that soil, and then just insert the sensor into that hole. Once we have them in the ground, the next thing we're going to do is firm some soil around there and then kind of make a little bit of a, a berm around that sensor also. We just don't want any water running down the side um, and, and messing up our sensor readings. Another thing to remember before you install them um, is to tip them over just to make sure there's no water accumulated up in the tube. Um, sometimes we'll get some water up there and that'll mess up our sensor readings for a couple weeks. Uh, be sure to remember to GPS your location where you installed the sensors or bring some flags to mark them. Um, that's a good Thing, otherwise you're going to have a hard time finding those sensors as the corn gets bigger. So once we have that completed, um, you should be ready to uh, read your sensors and just double check, make sure they work properly. Um, they should be reading somewhere close to zero. As long as they're below five, they should be good. If they're reading above that, it may be time to get a new sensor. So when you have your watermark sensors installed, um, the next step will be go back to the field and, and check them. Um, so usually those again, we can do them once a week. Some growers like to do it more frequently. Um, there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can use a handheld reader, um, which is portable. Um, it's also the cheapest method, but then you do have to go out in the field. Um, so that with that, you're just going to clip on to the two different wires. You're going to hit the read button, and you're going to get a value from 0 to 199. The wetter the soil is, the, the smaller the value will be. Um, the drier it is, the bigger it'll get. The other option for producers is to use a, a data logger. Um, that data logger is going to record the values for the watermark sensors every couple hours um, so that way they don't have to go out in the field to check them. Um, then they can also download that, that information at the end of the season. The next step for producers in the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network, um, for those that have an ET gauge or atmometer, um, the ET gauge is a tool that we use to give us a reading of crop water use throughout the season. Um, so that we can get a, get a reference ET that then we can calculate our actual crop water use. Um, this gives us the same value as all the weather stations across the state. The nice thing is the ET gauge is something close and local um, that you can get a little bit better number maybe for your location. The value that you get is good for a, a five or six mile radius, um, so you don't need, usually one producer can get by with one ET gauge. So with the ET gauge, the, the first thing we need to do before we go out to the field is do a little bit of prep work. Um, best thing is to get a bottle of distilled water. Uh, we need to use distilled water instead of tap water, otherwise it will eventually damage our sensor. So once you have your, your distilled water, um, go ahead and pour the distilled water into the ET gauge, filling up all the way. If you fill it too full, don't worry. You can always um, pull down on the glass tube to release the water out. But once we have it filled up with water, uh, next thing you want to do um, is fill up the ceramic top. So pour some water into the ceramic top. It usually goes down a little bit, so you may need to add some more water a second time. Once you have that done, go ahead and throw the suction tube beneath the water line. Best method I've found is to use my finger to cap it off, and then as you release and get it below the water level, it should start flowing. That way you make sure you have no error in the, in the lines. Then you can go ahead and, and attach the suction tube to the ceramic top, and then go ahead and put that back onto the top of the T-gauge. 
The one thing you don't want to forget before you to leave is to install the bird wires. Those bird wires are there to keep the birds from sitting on it. Um, so be sure to put those. If you can't find them from last year, um, it's a good idea to find, you know, purchase another set. With the ET gauge, we're going to go out once a week and read that. Try to read it the same day of the week, um, about the same time of day, and just read it like a reverse rain gauge. So you're going to see how far drop, how far the water level drops. The key with this is that it gives us a better number than just using book values. Um, every year is a little bit different, so that ET gauge gives us a better reading of our crop water use. The other thing we're going to need to do with an ET gauge is track our grow stage. So depending on that grow stage, it's going to give us a different crop coefficient. That crop coefficient is going to vary anywhere from 0.1 all the way to 1.1. V2 corn is only going to have a crop coefficient of 0.1. Once we get to V16 right before tassel, our crop coefficient goes to 1.1. So that multiplier gives us a lot larger crop water use um, depending on our grow stage. Soil water sensors cost around $35 each, the handheld monitor is about $250, and the ET gauge is priced around $225. We'll link to material about the Nebraska Ag Water Management Network on our website at marketjournal.unl.edu, including information on the free crop water app from UNL, which helps track soil water availability based on sensor readings.